Hello folks. Well, as promised, this is my review of the new Horizon Hobby Blade Torrent 110 FPV quadcopter. Well, I'm sure that I'm not the first to review this neat little machine, but I am legal. And what do I mean by that? Well, this machine, as stated on the Horizon website, needs to be flown by a person with a genuine, up-to-date HAM FCC technician's license or higher. I don't know how many other reviewers actually have one, but I do, and I am proud of it. I previously explained all this in my last review on the JJRC Rebel Racing Quad. It actually has a switch so that you can turn down the video output power so a person can fly it legally without a license. Well, be that as it may, this Torrent 110 has an output video power of 150 milliwatt, so you need the license. Well, this again is different from the coded RF output from your transmitter, which is legally allowed to pump out one watt max. Well, I found that there are actually many FCC and HAM folks searching the airwaves daily for violators, and the fines are between seven and $10,000, so I wasn't going to take the chance. I do bet there will be others who buy these machines and review them that will totally ignore the law. They may not get caught, but I don't want to take the chance when it's so easy to get the ham license. I am also disappointed that the ads do not state anything about the license requirement, including this one in the latest model airplane news magazines. Horizon Hobby does have it in fine print on their website, though. So let's take a look at this neat little machine, and then we're going to fly it. Well, first of all, let's take a look at what you're going to need to fly it. You need a six-channel transmitter, either DSMX or DSM2. I'm using my DX8 Generation 2 with telemetry. You need a monitor or headset for the FPV, and you need batteries. You also need a charger. As far as the batteries go, you need either a 2S 800 milliamp or a 3S 450 milliamp, depending on how crazy you want to get. The unit comes with a 2mm carbon fiber mainframe and it's uh, pretty strong looking from what I can see. It comes with a 20x20 20 20 BL Heli ESC uh, for running the motors and also the receiver. Uh, it's got prop cards and it's got an adjustable camera angle depending on how you want to fly. It's got four high torque 1104 to 7600 kV motors that make this thing absolutely jump no matter how you're going to fly it. And the F3 flight controller is already set up and tuned so you're all set. And really cool is the receive flight log data such as RF health, in addition to the battery voltage on board, you know its telemetry receiver is going to tell you exactly what's going on. And you've got different color options you can get if you order these extra colors for uh, options. It also comes with three bladed props with an industry standard way of mounting them. It's got a 150 milliwatt video transmitter, which like I said before, you need a ham license to operate it. And it's got a 600 television line camera on it, so it ought to be very clear. And that is field of view is 120 degrees. I'm gonna use my JJRC headset along with my Eosheen video uh, DVR so you can see what I'm seeing and which records it also. So here we go. Well these screws, zip ties, the Velcro, etc. all came with the unit. I only used the Velcro to keep the battery from slipping. The transmitter must be set up exactly as shown and especially with 11 milliseconds. The European version has a 25 milliwatt video transmitter and the USA has the 150 thus the ham license is required. It also has the E-band shown by the blue light. To bind the transmitter you have to push the small button and plug in the battery at the same time. It's quite a feat. Then you bind it with the transmitter. Okay, the one thing that you have to do is make sure that your battery is flat so this thing will sit on the ground flat when you turn it on. So you want to make sure that your battery wires aren't going to catch into the props either. 
So you plug it in and you have to turn it over right away upside down, you're not going to get a good trim. See, that has to be perfectly trimmed. Okay? So, this is switch H. When you push it to one, the motors start. When you shut that off, the motors stop. On this side, on your switch B, which is your landing gear switch, when you're in the zero, this is called the angle mode. And uh, that means that it will self-level and it will only bank uh, about 60 degrees. When you put it in the B position, this actually allows, it it's, will not self-level, but uh, it will uh, run a, like a half rate It's for smooth flying and it will maintain whatever attitude you put it in. And then when it's in switch two, this will means that no matter what you do, you're actually in full control. And so you can, that's mostly for racing. On there. To get this thing started, you have to flip this switch first. And it starts. Then you've got to level it out. Okay, it's out of trim a lot. Got to pull forward. And it won't shut off unless you shut the switch off. So you've got to be on top of it all the time. Okay, it says to plug it in and set it down level. You can't set it level, there's no landing gear. So, I'm just going to set it down like this. Now it's level. Now, let's see what happens. I turn it on. As you can see here, I made myself a little landing pad here for taking off. I can set it on there. Everything is level. The gyros are level. And it'll take off just like that. Okay, this is a 850 out of my V626 quadcopter. I'm going to try that battery in there, and then I'm going to try the 820C and see how this works. So. Well, the ads say it will fly in the wind pretty good, and it's breezy today, so let's see. Okay, well in conclusion, 
I found the 800 milliamp 30C2S battery flew on average 4 minutes 45 seconds. The 800 milliamp 20C2S battery flew about 3 minutes 45 seconds and the 850-30C2S battery flew at 5 minutes 55 seconds. I didn't have a 3S battery to try but uh, I can tell you this thing is quite fast. In the angle mode, it pops level and basically stops, so I found the switch position one the best. In the full-on stunt mode, I found the setting of the ailerons and elevators set to 75%. Half rate made it not so sensitive for these maiden flights. Well, I really like this machine, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up. But I do wish it came with a battery and some spare props. Also note that I buy most of my machines and don't watch others reviews first so to remain unbiased during my reviews. I bought this one at Donovan's Hobby and Scuba Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota as they treat me very well there. Well thanks a lot for watching folks and happy flying!